questions in the examples. Um, the first one, problem seven, page 188. A police car traveling at 30 meters per second passes a stationary observer. Its siren emits a note of frequency one kilohertz. One kilohertz, by the way, is 1000 hertz. So it's, it's emitting a frequency of 1000 hertz. That's the actual frequency of the siren. If the velocity of the sound is 336 meters per second, now actually, sorry, we won't call it V because the velocity of the sound wave is that. What is the frequency heard by the observer when the car is approaching the observer and when the car is moving away? Okay. The police car is traveling at a velocity of 30 meters per second. Okay, now, so effectively, we have F, sorry, the formula, the apparent frequency is C, which is the speed of the wave, times F, which is the actual frequency of the sound, divided by C plus or minus V. So if it is approaching the observer, and that was the first one, wasn't it? Approaching. If it's approaching, we know that we're going to experience a high frequency, a higher frequency. So we need the number, the plus or the minus here, whichever one of these will make this number larger. We know that if we make this a plus, our bottom will be big and that number will be overall smaller. If we make this a minus, that number is smaller. So we want this to be a minus so that our overall frequency will be larger. Uh, so source moving towards the observer, that's the formula. All you literally do is put these numbers in, so I don't want to waste the time doing it. A thousand goes in for F, C, that goes in for C, V is 30, and you use the minus. For the source moving away from the observer, we use the formula with the plus in it, so that we get a lower frequency, because this number is big. And again, the same numbers. So I'm not going to bother working it out, I'm just going to move on to the next question. Okay, the next question. A train whistle emits a continuous note of frequency 800. So again, 800 hertz is the actual frequency. So it's F, 800 hertz. Um, when the source is, uh, sorry, uh, it approaches the person standing near the track. To the person, the frequency of the note appears to be 920. So they are hearing a higher frequency. So it is approaching the person. They're hearing 920 um, hertz. Find the speed of the train. And they've told you that the speed of sound in air, so the speed of the sound, is 340 meters per second. So that's the speed that sound travels in air. Okay, so again we have the apparent frequency is the speed of the sound times the actual frequency divided by C plus or minus V. In this situation, we know it's approaching the guy. Even if they didn't tell us, because he's hearing a higher frequency than the actual frequency, we know he's approaching. So again, we know that this number needs to be the smaller of the numbers uh, for this frequency to be the largest of them. So we need to put this as a minus, okay? And now we know F dash is 920. We know that C is 340 times F, which is 800, over C, which is 340, minus V. We have one equation and one unknown, so we can solve it. Now, it's up to you. You could rearrange this formula so that you had V equals, or you can rearrange it with the numbers in. Okay? So that's up to you. Um, yeah, let, let's rearrange it just so you can see it's a good maths exercise anyway. So if we want V on its own, the first thing I would say to do is multiply both sides by C minus V. So we get F dash times C minus V is equal to C times F. We want V on its own, multiply out the brackets. F dash C minus F dash V is equal to C F. We want V, so let's keep that on its own first. So minus F dash V is equal to CF minus CF dash. 
and then we have v is equal to c f minus c f dash all over minus f dash and you can just put the numbers in exactly as it is now you could multiply the top and the bottom by minus one if you want and you'll end up with c f dash minus c f over f dash not necessary okay you could also factor out the c if you wanted so you could call that c times f dash minus c but either way you should get the exactly correct answer so let's i'll put it into that formula so then we have v equals 340 times 920 is our f dash sorry what f minus 800 over f dash which is 920 so we'll quickly multiply that out so 340 we'll go quickly now 340 uh, multiplied by 920 minus 800 and divide that by 920 and our answer is 44.347 or 45 meters per second okay so the hardest part of that question is really rearranging the formula so again here this is fine you could have just stuck it in here all I did between here and here is I multiplied both sides the top and the bottom by a minus which turned that into a plus f1 it made that one plus and that one minus so I just reversed the order of them and then I factored out the c okay the next question Whew. Um, a man, a train travelling at a constant speed passes through a station. To a person standing on the platform, the note emitted changes from 1216 hertz to 960 hertz. Now, that is from the train passes through a station. Okay. If the speed of sound in air is 340, so C is 340 meters per second, and find the velocity at which the train was traveling and the actual frequency of the note. Okay, so the assumption here is this is the frequency as the train is approaching the observer. This is the frequency as the train is moving away from the observer. Okay, so neither of these are the actual frequency of the note emitted by the train but what we do know is we know this is our f dash when it's moving towards the observer and this is the f dash when it's moving away from the observer so in this situation f dash equals uh, c the speed of sound in air times the frequency of the and now it's the speed of the wave in general but in this case it's sound in air times the actual frequency over c and remember again we need that number to be high so it's c minus b we need this number to be small minus b and here we have f dash equals c f over c plus b right now we want to find f so we know all the others okay so again it's up to you whether you use maths initially or whether you put the numbers in yeah it's up to well, what will I do? I'll put the numbers in first. I think most people will probably tend to put the numbers in. So 1216 is equal to 340 times F over 340 minus uh, V. Okay, here we have 960 is equal to 340 times F all over 340 plus v because it's moving away now note two equations two unknowns you can solve it mathematically now it's a maths problem okay you have two equations with two unknowns so it's again it's up to you what way you'd like to do it it's if you look here if you multiply across to get rid of the fraction you have 340 minus v times one two one six 
is equal to 340 F. Over here, multiply across by the fraction. So you're going to get 340 plus V multiplied by 960 is equal to 340 F. Now, that's handy because 340 F is equal to that. And this 340 F is equal to that. So we can put the two of them equal. Okay, so then you get 340 minus V times 1216 is equal to 960 times 340 plus V. Multiplying out that by that, so 1216 by 340 is 413440 minus that by that, which is 1216V is equal to, I hope you can see that, is equal to 960 multiplied by 340, 326400 plus 960V. Okay, now let's just take that one up. Okay, from that, numbers to one side, uh, V's to the other. So we have a bigger number here. So let's subtract that from that. So we get, uh, let's see, 413440, take away 326400. So that leaves us with 87040 on this side when we subtract that from both sides. And then what we'll do is we'll add 1216 to both sides. So over here, we're going to get 960 plus 1216, which is 2176V. Leaving you with V is equal to 87040 divided by 21. Divided by 2176 giving you a V of 40 meters per second. Okay, let's just check that one. Yep, V is 40 and then, oh, I've rubbed everything out, but we can then go back once we know V, what did we have? We had the formula, uh, oh, I can't remember. You'd have to go back to the original formula and put in 40 for V, and then you can find F from that. Okay, so that should be straightforward. Okay, the last question. The last question. A whistle emitting a note of 2 kilohertz is whirled on a horizontal circle at an angular velocity of 6 pi radians per second. Okay, 6 pi radians per second. You guys should have done in, in maths, I don't think did you, but anyway, there are 2 pi radians in a circle. Okay, a radian is just another unit. And there are 2 pi radians in 360 degrees okay so what they're telling us is the angular velocity means that it is sweeping out six pi radians every second okay um right we'll just leave it at that just now and we'll talk about it when we need to in a minute okay so it's going in a circle it's a horizontal circle at an angular velocity if the highest note heard by a person a large distance away is 2100 hertz. So if you think about it, uh, if it's spinning, it's going around like this, so that's its, velo its velocity will always be perpendicular to the direction that it's traveling when it's going in a circle. So the person listening down here will hear the highest note when it is moving towards them, and that'll be the highest velocity because at this stage the velocity is going perpendicular, so it'll only be hearing a component of that velocity towards it. Okay, so that's the velocity, V, um, of the moving object. Okay, uh, now sorry, let me read the rest of the question. If the highest note heard by a person a large distance away is 2100 hertz, that's what they are, I won't put the hertz in, that's what they're hearing when the source is moving towards the observer. So that is going to be 2100 is C times F over C minus V. Okay, remember, again, the minus, so that that's the smallest number, so that's the biggest number it'll be. 
Um, oh, and the whistle is emitting a note of 2000, so F is 2000 hertz, 2 kilohertz. Um, find the radius of the circle, and again, you are to use the fact that the speed of sound in air, I think it's 340. Okay, so basically, the highest note occurs when the source is moving towards the observer, okay, which is at this point here. So at that stage, we can put in uh, 2100 is equal to 340 times 2000 over C minus V, which is 340 minus V. Okay, to speed up because I'm worried about the length of the video. From that, you can get that uh, V is equal to um, 16.19 meters per second. If you can't do that, you can ask me. 16.19 meters per second using this. Okay, that's what V is. The question was to find the radius of the circle. Um, okay, I think we need to use a formula that we're not used to. So V. The speed, when something is moving in a circle, the speed that it's moving at, at a particular part of the circle, V, like, sorry, it's moving at V, constant speed going around in the circle, but uh, the relationship between the speed, the linear speed and the angular speed is V is equal to R omega. That's actually an easy proof, but I don't want to go into it now because I don't have time. So V is equal to R omega, so R is just V divided by omega. Omega is this angular speed. Okay, so in this particular case, r is v, which is 16.19, divided by 6 pi. So the radius of the circle is 0 0.86 meters. Okay, I can easily show you this proof. It's, you, you all should be capable of it and you probably need it for maths anyway. The last question was, what's the lowest note heard by the observer and the lowest note well remember the lowest note is when it's moving away at v so the lowest note is going to be c times f which we know divided by c plus v and we know all of that so i'm not going to bother doing that you should be able to work that out okay right hopefully that'll allow you to do all the questions for homework from the next section